as a health coach, you know, working with all different kinds of people, different bodies, how do you work with people about goals? Do you have a process or do they come to you and just tell you what their goal is? How does that work? So when it comes to setting goals, every single person is different. Even if they look the same, they're still different with their goals. And it's best as a health co coach to not tell people what their goals should be. It's best to ask them questions, have them answer questions, and then to assess their answers. So usually I do an assessment. I ask questions about sleep, stress management, diet, exercise, energy level, communication. And then I take notes as they talk. And then I take little, you know, there's specific things I'll pick up on and then I'll review them with them. And I'll say, what do you think of these things? You mentioned that you want this and this and this. I find it's best to get information from a conversation rather than saying, what are your goals? Mm -hmm. So I do an assessment and then all of a sudden the conversation, it, they'll come out naturally. And then we have a long list. The list can be as few as three or four things. It can be 10 or 12 things. So then from there, after we look at them, I say, well, what, where do you want to start? And I encourage people to start with something easy, <laughs> especially if they haven't focused in a while on setting goals and working towards those goals. Sometimes they pick the hardest one first. It's good to know where you want to go, but it's best to start with the easier ones because then you build confidence and then you get the pattern down of reaching those goals. And to also make sure it's done in increments and not have a goal like, I haven't been exercising, but I think I should exercise every day. And I'll say, okay, well, since you haven't been doing it every day, let's start small. Let's do something that's sustainable, realistic, and build from there because the goals are here. And you don't go from here to here, even though you might be able to for a couple weeks, maybe a month, it's going to fall back. Mm -hmm. So what we're, The goal that I suggest is sustainable, realistic, small increments. That way it's, you keep building on it. You may not see a difference from one week to the next, but each month you'll see a difference and then it'll be something you can continue. So in, in the seven years, have you seen you know, like, what are a couple of the most common goals that people have? Okay, I would say, um, I, I would say that people want to get fit, and they're just very general. It's like, I want to be fit. And um, that isn't necessarily, you know, but what does that mean to them? Exactly, exactly. It's not, it's often what they tell me, but we have to go back a lot to figure that out to, to what does that mean to you and what do you enjoy doing? Cause it's important to find things you enjoy. Cause if you find things you don't enjoy and you do it because it's popular or trendy, it's not realistic or sustainable. So I like to find out more information, but it's usually something around fitness um, and changing some habits around eating. Oftentimes mm -hmm. people snack too much, drink too much wine, um, so they often don't know where to start. So they'll give me a very general request, like get fit, lose weight. It's very general. And then we have to go from there and figure out what are the habit changes that we want to make to reach these goals. And we want to do it, obviously, like I said, in a realistic way. Mm -hmm. And I, I usually break that down and ask questions like, what do you like to do? Um, what are things you've done in the past that you had success with? Um, what, is there something new you want to try? So starting with what is it? And then how do you have the tools that you need? So if you need to have certain things to do the class, like a big stability ball, do you have those? So we look at what tools they have. Um, where is it something you want to do in your home? Is it something you want to go out and do? And how often is it something you're going to do every day? Is it something three times a week? So I usually break it down by asking those questions to find out what their movement goals are. And how do you help motivate people? Or do you have a range? Like some people are just so self-motivated. Or is that really, you know, one of the major roles you play is helping to motivate them to, you know, meet their movement goals? The first thing I usually do, and mo motivation is a huge part of coaching, um, is I have to find out what motivates them. 
Is it more external or is it more internal? And I usually ask them that and then I give some examples. Um, are you motivated by um, some type of compliment? Do you enjoy getting a compliment or validation? Um, are you someone who likes to get a trophy or something for your achievement? Um, acknowledgement. Okay, those are all external. Um, if it's internal, a sense of achievement mm -hmm. is a big one. Like, oh, you know, using a tracking system and seeing, oh, look, I did it this week. I got everything done this week. So, and then finding the tools to work with. So because everybody's different, I don't just try to motivate. I have seen coaches just go, you're great. You can do it. You're great. And I'm, I discourage that type of motivation because um, external motivation is good to a point, but what I try to do is get people to recognize internal motivation, intrinsic motivation, because as we age, the external stuff doesn't work as much. Mm -hmm. And that's why when people age, they start to say, oh, I, I just don't know why I'm just not motivated to do it anymore because the old way doesn't work anymore as you age. Mm -hmm. So you have to really focus on internal motivation and find out what is going to do it for you and how good it feels. So I, talk to the person, find out a little bit about what direction they are. I explain the difference and I have a full presentation I do on motivation that I just actually did for Kaiser two weeks ago. Oh, great. Kaiser. Yeah. And they wanted the motivation one because in March they were seeing a drop and people were kind of like losing momentum, trying to sustain during COVID. Um, and so we went through that to help people find what works for them. Mm -hmm. When you, you think about it, you're like, well, it seems so easy. I can do it myself. This is the common pitfall is you think, I don't need help. I know what I need to do. The problem is not usually knowing what you need to do. It's accountability mm -hmm. and guidance. Um, so yes, that's the big thing is people, and then they get, uh, they lose their confidence because they think, oh, I can't do it. Oh, I guess I should just give up. And they give up quickly because they get mad at themselves. They beat themselves down. A coach, it's really great when you work with a coach, someone you don't know, who keeps you accountable, helps you change your habits. I am against the kind of ca uh, coach that's always validating. I noticed I trained with a Swedish company and I also trained with some American companies on coaching. And it was so different. It was amazing to me. And the American coaching to me felt a bit like enabling telling people what they want to hear, because that's the, what we do a little bit more in America. Like you should say what I want to hear more than the truth. Mm -hmm. And it's, they're not that way. They are very direct with you and they're consistent. Mm -hmm. They don't like, you know, they're going to give you a compliment when you get these goals and when we progress, but they also aren't going to always tell you you're right and good job because that's not going to actually change any of your habits. Right. So you asked about common pitfalls and some of the most common pitfalls are thinking you can do it yourself and also um, being unrealistic with the goals. And that's what we do in America. I hate to put it down, but we're like, I'm going to lose this much weight in this much time. Right. Yeah. And then maybe we, we do achieve it, but guess what? It all comes back on. Why? Because our body will store everything. When we lose that much weight that fast, it's going to go, I'm going to store it all because I'm scared because I just went through trauma. So if you do it slowly, then the body adjusts and you don't compromise your immune system. But those are, you know, we think we can get things done in 14 days when typically it's 28 days. We don't give ourselves enough time. So to me, that's how my coaching is different. That's mm -hmm. what I focus on is sustainable. And the minimum time I'll work with someone is three months. And the Swedes, the way they trained us, the minimum time you work with someone is a year. You want to see them through every season. It doesn't mean you have to see them frequently throughout that year. The first three mo months are the most important. Mm -hmm. Then after that, you can cut back on the frequency, but you're supposed to work with them. They sign up for a year and you only get to do it one time. You only get to do the program one time in Sweden. In the U.S., we're like, you mess up? Sure, we'll take you again. Pay us again. Yeah, we'll do it again. And if you know you get to uh, do it again and again, are you going to stay on track that first time in Sweden? No, they stay on track because they're like, this is my only chance. Yeah. Tell me a little about the brain body, uh, you know, fitness class you'll be teaching. So the brain body class is something I created about five years ago. And I had a spinal cord injury. I broke my neck and 
it was the medication and the healing. I was really having a hard time with memory. My processing was off. I was on, like I said, some medications. So I was like, well, I guess I need to do work. And I've seen this with people who are aging also deal with this. So I said, I'm going to start doing this. So I started to practice myself of things, including coordination work, rhythm and cueing. So musicality, um, movement, cardio conditioning to get the heart rate up to help with the blood flow to the brain, to the extremities. Um, and sometimes I include strength work, like with a resistance band. And then I also do puzzles, like brain body puzzles, like this hand's a blade, this is a fist. And then you keep switching like this. So, you know, and it, it looks so easy, but it's not. Mm -hmm. And then I'll add something like a shimmy and a punching at the same time and, or marching in place. I keep adding little things. Now everyone's at different levels. So you have to start basic. And then you add on, because sometimes I have students who've been with me five years, sometimes I have new students. But what we're doing is we're doing everything to circulate the blood flow, to make sure we're reaching the extremities and the brain. Everything from puzzles to cardio to strength. And